Okay, so this isn't going to be some polished video. This is just a quick video that kind of goes through some of the things that I probably should have covered in my initial kind of video with regards to Fluent Can't Beta. Now, this is the beta version. So what I've done is I've jumped into the settings because I think there's a few things inside you that answer some questions that I know have come up in the comments on that video and also probably will come up. So if we take a quick look at the settings, you've got options for your store settings. And as you can see, all the normal things you'd need to expect to do with your currency, all those kinds of things. So nothing exciting here. Jump into your page setup, for example, and you can see you can choose what pages reflect inside the normal page setup. Again, these can be auto created during the setup side of things. Same thing for your single product and order setup. There's options here for how you want the variations to be handled, whether they're going to be images with text, masonry layouts, and so on. So nice to see that you have some control over that. Also, I'm assuming that this will probably be controllable as well inside whatever build you're using, whether that's the Gutenberg integration or the Bricks and Elemental and Divi and so on when they come out. I'd like to see that. How you want to handle things like your product set if you're modals and things, your theme setups, so you can customize the color schemes and so on and any additional info. A couple of useful little bits and pieces inside you, like show email footer, cart icons and so on. So some useful things inside there. Payments. Now, I know payments have come up in the comments section. As you can see, in the beta version that I'm currently using here, we have both Stripe, we've got PayPal, and we've got sort of your payment on delivery, your cash on delivery thing, which we generally use for setup and testing purposes. We'll also notice there's an awful lot of other options inside your Molly, Square, Authorize, and so on, Paddle. Now, I know that one of the things that a lot of people are going to be concerned with is will their payment gateway be supported and the understanding is that a lot of payment gateways will be supported and if not there will be ways of connecting up to those if there's not a native integration inside fluent card itself uh, so check out the website that'll give you more information about that there as well you've got your receipt template which you can customize and a lot of customization options here for your sort of receipts your emails and things going out Certain things are not available yet, but they will be available. But as you can see, you can customize this. Again, you've got your visual, your code. You've got short codes you can use inside you. And if you're familiar with using something like Fluent CRM or any of the sort of the Fluent tools, you'll know you have these kind of short codes that you can use. And pretty much everything you should need is inside here that you can then add into the templates that you create, which again is a nice touch, gives us a lot of options to customize how everything looks and feels. So that's quite nice. Invoice and packaging, again, we've got the same kind of things inside here. So, for example, your invoice template, this is currently under development. So, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. Some of these things may change. But in general, I think we get a good feel for how this is all going to work. So you could easily pull in completely custom created options and pull the code in and drop that inside here. And then integrate any of these short codes into it and customize the look. Or you can just use what's kind of created inside you and tweak it as you need to. Same thing for your packing slips, for your delivery, and so on. So all these are available for editing. Like I say, they're currently under development, but those features are here, and they're all short code embeddable, which is nice to see. Check out actions, so you can control various different things here. So you can see we've got a current integration here, and I've set this up very, very quickly, and I've got Fluent CRM installed, the free version. Obviously, you're going to get the most bang for your buck if you're using the pro version of this, which I am. But in this example, I'm only using the free version just to test things out. But you can see we can give it a name. We can choose what list we want to connect this up to. We can map the relevant fields. And again, we've got those options for our short codes inside you. So we can map the relevant things for email, first name, and so on. Then any additional email. And again, we've got the select field. So we can pull in that dynamic information from our order process, from our clients, and things like that. Enable dynamic tag inputs. Obviously, a snake has written this, which is kind of strange. But, you know, it's there should you need it. Uh, so cool. we see we've got the dynamic tags for input. Any notes you want to add in, enable double opt-in. Uh, there's something here I think needs to be updated. It says double opt-in enable. MailChimp will send the confirmation email. I'm pretty sure that doesn't need to be MailChimp, so maybe that's something they want to sort out. Resubscribe, want to mark them as a VIP, and whether you want to enable this. So if you are using Fluent CRM, and if you want to get the most out of something like Fluent Cart, Fluent CRM is, in my opinion, a bit of a must. You can at least connect things up. And I only see that expanding, especially when they start to bring the automations and things online inside, you know, sort of Fluent CRM and connecting that up. I think you're going to have a pretty powerful marketing setup. Then on top of this, we've got... Checkout actions, 
ignore that, so it's the wrong one. Email notifications, so you can customize your email notifications and things here. So there's some pretty nifty little options available here. And again, we can use those short codes and things. All that is accessible to us. Then we've got the different emails. Now, currently, we can't edit these, but you will be able to in the final release. This is just the sort of the beta version of it. So all these will be editable. And I'm assuming that all of these will also be able to pull in those short codes like we've seen throughout all of this setup. Your roles and permissions, you can set up different roles and what people can do. So you can see if we open this up, you've got some new roles like manager, worker, accountant, super admin, and so on. So you can control what can be accessed and who can access what inside you. So this worker role, for example, shows you the various different things they can do. Storage settings, you can have all of your files local or you can use S3 storage. So if you were using this for digital delivery, you can have your file stored somewhere like S3, which is, again, pretty nice to see jump into manage and you can set things up inside you just drop in your relevant details shipping in all honesty the works in fundamentally the same kind of way as you have with woocommerce it's very simple you can create shipping zones and inside there you can set up shipping methods so if we open this up you can see i've got a uk shipping zone region is set to be the uk and then i've got a flat rate and i've got a sort of expedited shipping and you can see if we open this up we can rec sort of put all the details in the uh, name the rate, how we want to handle this, whether it aggregates or takes the highest class cost and so on, whether it's per order, or whether it's per item or per price. You get the idea, so you can customize this. And obviously your license settings is the last thing inside you. So that's what I want to show you inside the settings. One of the other questions that came up was, how is it handling the database side of things? Well, if we take a look at the database, now I want to make you aware that this is WordPress installed and Fluent Cart and Fluent CRM. So there's additional tables that you probably wouldn't see if you didn't have Fluent CRM installed. But you can see we've got these FCT. These are the Fluent Cart tables. So they're dedicated tables to handle all the data. So it's minimizing what's going to be used as part of you know, the WordPress database. So that should help maintain the speed that we have you. And especially if you sort of offload your storage to something like S3, that should optimize things as well. So that's basically what I wanted to quickly show you with regards to some of the options that I didn't cover in the first video. Hopefully this has answered some of those questions and highlighted some of the other things that you may have questions about. Um, but yeah, if you've got any other questions, just let me know in the comment section down below. And if I can help, I absolutely will do. And I'm sure some of those lovely folks over from WP Managed Ninja will also get involved and give you feedback as and when required. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If you did, drop a like down below. All the relevant details and links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.